music as we know it today produced by wind and stringed instruments is haram. Yes. It has entered upon us. We are inundated by it. You can't even go to the bathroom without hearing music. I mean, something I experienced in the West, but I also found it here. I went to a couple of bathrooms here and I heard music coming at me, piped in. What is the purpose of that? Make you hurry up and get back out and get back to buy or what? <laughs> it's a challenge. And we should be clear on this point. Because of course you have people who will say, Oh, Ibn Hazm! He said there are no authentic hadiths on music. And Sheikh, this one and that one said, Yeah, music's okay. I listen to it. <laughs> but when we look at the tradition of the early scholars of Islam, they made all kinds of statements against it. And there are hadiths which are sound. This topic, we should research it and be clear on it. Not go according to what is pleasing to us. That shouldn't be our criterion. Because I like music. I like to hear those who say it's okay. Those who say it's not okay, I don't like to hear them. This is not our criterion. You know, some people say, well, oh, you know, Dr. Bilal is an old guy, you know. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't listen to it because he, he doesn't really know. Well, some of you may know that, yeah, I used to be a lead guitarist in a rock group. Yeah. It's not a part of my bio. <laughs> but that was the reality. When I lived here in Malaysia, yeah, in East Malaysia, in Sabah, I was lead guitarist. Alhamdulillah, I found Islam. My bass player also found Islam, and the drummer also found Islam later. Alhamdulillah. None of us played music after that. But the point is that the allure and the power of music, I know it. And it became so obvious to me when, after accepting Islam, and I was still playing in nightclubs, I accepted Islam, and then I divorced myself from the culture of the other members of the group in which I played. So I didn't participate with them in the intoxicants and things that people were doing and taking. So in the nightclubs, I used to be the only sober one. I'm there playing away and people are dancing. And, and you know, I just looked at this and I could see that this was so devilish, you know. When Allah speaks about, you know, how shaitan prods the people, yauzuhum azza, you know, <laughs> like this. that's exactly what was going on, you know. I could see it, it was clear, clear. So, this power that music has over people, where people end up loving it. Loving it 
more than they love the Quran. This is يُحِبُّونَهُ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ Their love for it, and that is why even attempts to replace it with anashid. Okay? It started out innocently, but then the anashid ended up like rock groups. The anashid artist comes in, they smoke on the stage, and you know, he's, hey, what's the difference? It's gone right back to that same thing. And people will enjoy listening to Anashid. You turn on the Quran and say, hey, no, I want to hear this, uh, this artist or that artist. They feel more pleasure in hearing Anashid than hearing the Quran itself. What is that? What is that scale? What has happened here? This is real. As some scholars refer to music, they refer to it as the Quran of Shaitan. Satan's Quran. And it goes into the heart. And it occupies the heart. And when it occupies the heart, there's no room for the Quran of Allah. That's the reality. It squeezes it out. And how you can know how powerful and the grip that it has on the human heart, you can find it in the fact that if somebody plays two bars of a song which you didn't hear for 20 years, you heard it 20 years ago when you are a kid, but all you need to hear is just Dun, 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 dun. Ah, it's back in your head. The whole song is there. Words, everything, it's all there. Like it never left. That is the way it is. This is real. So when Prophet Muhammad warned us about it, he warned us about something which was dangerous. Dangerous for our souls. That's what Islam is there to do, to protect our souls. So, we have to divorce ourselves from this obsession. And no doubt it becomes an obsession. So, my brothers and sisters, I encourage you to stop for a minute and reflect. Many of us are caught up in currents. We're just going along in a stream. We don't really have any control. We don't have time to stop and think about it. We're just in it. We need to stop and think because we really don't know when we will breathe our last. As young people, you might think, I got a lot of time. How many young people didn't have a lot of time? That's reality. So we need to stop and think. And to turn back to Allah and to love Him and worship Him through our love of Him by obeying the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we need to do that in order for this Ummah to succeed it is the only way we can chase the dunya replicate the West, their lifestyles, etc. But where does it lead? What is at the end of it all? Wretchedness. 
we have something which the rest of the world does not have. Islam. We need to preserve it. We need to take care of it. We need to live it as it deserves to be lived.